Welcome to this video on speciation. So speciation is just the process that leads to the development of a new species, and we're going to look at how that happens. So within a species, different groups can develop. So for example, if we look at gorillas, you get the west lowland gorillas and the mountain gorillas. And in fact, they've become so separate that some people are now saying they're actually separate species. But what happens is because they live in different environments, they have different gene pools, they have different kinds of natural selection, and so therefore, they evolve differently. So the word that you need to learn is the word deem. This is a local population or a small subgroup of some species where their phenotype, their physical characteristics, reflect the local environment. So that's like the lowland gorilla reflecting the environment where they have more grassland to walk around on, and the mountain gorilla being better in trees. And because they have these two separate environments, they develop separately, and there's limited gene flow between these two groups. So that's a deem, a subgroup, where the phenotype varies. The second word we need to learn is the word klein. So this is when you have a geographical gradient in the phenotype or the physical characteristics. So for example, this gradient could be up a hill. So if we look here, we've got a mountain going up and we've got one species of plant and it changes as you go further and further up the mountain. And if you go down the other side, they're separate again. So there's two factors. One is altitude, so the actual height of the plant and that varies how much oxygen there is in the air, how much food there is in the soil, but also there's latitude, so how it varies across a long space, so how wide it is. So if there's a gradual change either going up or across, this is a cline. They're not like deems where there's two completely separate groups. A cline is a gradient or a gradual change. So if we remember that speciation refers to the process that leads to the development of a new species, then we actually need to know two different types of speciation. The first is allopatric speciation. So this is where a group becomes geographically isolated from its parent group. So if we look at pine trees, for example, you can imagine there's an earthquake or a gully opens up and a river goes down the middle. Therefore, the trees on the left are geographically separated or isolated from the trees on the right hand side. And because they're now in different geographic areas, then they're going to have different pressures and therefore they're going to evolve differently. So this is one way that they can develop into a new species. So this is allopatric speciation. Another type is sympatric speciation. So this is where they have the same origin. So rather than being geographically completely separated, their gene flow is separated by something that's not geographic, so something different. So this could be behavioral differences or reproductive differences. So if we look at our pine trees again, this would be like a subgroup developing right in the middle of that original patch of pine trees. But if they have different characteristics or behave differently or reproduce differently, that means they've done sympatric speciation. And so given that they do things a little bit differently, this means they're also going to develop a little bit differently. So these are the two types of speciation that you need to know. So here's what you need to know from this video. The first is that within a species, different groups can develop, and we learned two different names for this. The first was a deem. This is where you get subgroups where different physical characteristics or phenotypes develop that reflect their environments. We also learned the word klein. So this is where you have a gradient over some space, some geography, where the phenotype gradually changes. So this could be changing altitude, so because of changing heights, or changing latitude. If you walk across a country or up a road or something like that, you notice that things might slowly start to change. We also learned the definition of speciation, which is the process that leads to the development of that new species. And there's two types of speciation that we covered. One, allopatric speciation. This is when you get two different groups geographically. So the two groups get separated, they're isolated from each other completely, like on an island or a glacier or a river. So if you ever see two groups that are completely separate to each other and have very different characteristics, it's likely that it was allopatric speciation and that they came from different origins. Compared to sympatric speciation, where they have the same origin. So in this case, the speciation or the difference in development occurs within that same geographic area. So the gene flow is prevented by completely different things like behavioral means or reproductive means. So let's look at a question now. In this question, we're looking at skinks. So they belong to the genus Oligosoa and they're endemic to New Zealand. So they appear to have undergone this rapid phase of divergence 23 to 25 million years ago. So it's estimated at this time that much more of New Zealand's landmass was underwater. So two oligosoma species, the shore skink, O. smithy, and the egg-laying skink called O. exist as sympatric species in northeastern New Zealand. 
And remember, St. Patrick means they're living in the same geography. And this is in northeastern New Zealand. So despite living within the same area, the species are not closely related. So O. smithy are these medium-sized skinks, and they're active in the daylight, and they give birth to live young. And these O. smithy are widely distributed in both coastal regions and in offshore islands, and they show genetic variation. Whereas in contrast, the other type, O. Sateri, are significantly larger, and they're nocturnal, so they live at night, and they lay eggs. So the distribution of Osateri is much more limited, so it's really only the northern offshore islands, and it shows remarkably little genetic variation. So what we need to do is discuss the natural selection pressures that most likely affected speciation and distribution of these two oligosoma species over the past 35 million years. So we're going to cover three points in our answer, and we'll go through them one by one. The first point is describe the type of speciation that's happened between these oligosoma species with reasons for that. And so the first part of that is just defining what speciation actually is so we can write down speciation is the process by which a new species develops. And then we can go on to identify the type of speciation that's going on. So we can say the two different species will have developed by allopatric speciation even though it says they exist now as sympatric species. We can talk about why. So allopatric speciation means the species developed in geographically distinct areas. And this is because it says in the question that 35 million years ago, New Zealand landmass was reduced to small islands. So they were separated geographically because a lot of New Zealand was underwater back then. So no gene flow could have occurred between these different islands. So over time, there's those different environments, and that meant that different alleles were selected for, different phenotypes were expressed, so different characteristics or evolution happened within those skinks. And then recently, uplift of the land has occurred, so the two different skink species were able to move into those similar environments. So now they can occupy the same area, even though previously they would have been in two completely different regions. But they're reproductively isolated, so they cannot reproduce together. One of them has live young, one of them lays eggs, for example. So the way we knew to give this answer is because it said 23 to 25 million years ago, much more of New Zealand's landmass was underwater. Therefore, we can assume they would have been separate. And the fact that they've developed so separately means that they must have undergone very different environmental pressures to evolve so differently to each other. But now we know that New Zealand is much closer to get. It's one country. A lot of land has uplifted out of the sea. So therefore, now we can say they live sympatrically. However, before they must have developed allopatrically. Now we can look at point two, which is explaining how biological and geographical factors have contributed to this speciation. So let's talk about each different skink one by one, starting with O. smithy. So it says these are medium sized and they're active during the daylight and they give birth to live young. So we want to identify the characteristics of these different species, which is what we've done in this first sentence. And then we can go on to say the advantages. So we could say that being active during the day means that they can actually run away from predators if they're sitting out being exposed. They don't want to be asleep and get sneakily eaten. We can also say that because they give birth to live young, the young are instantly less at risk from predators. So if the young can instantly run away and hide rather than just sitting there in an egg, it's less likely to be eaten. Whereas we can contrast that with Osateri, which are larger, they're nocturnal, and they lay eggs. So again, these are things we were told in the question. And these are the characteristics of how they've evolved. So we can say that this means they're more at risk to predation and the young have a lower chance of survival because they're sitting inside eggs. So the eggs could come and be eaten. So these are different biological factors that have contributed to the speciation. Now these are both factors that talk about New Zealand right now. But we also need to say that these would have happened over a long period of time while they were geographically isolated. And natural selection would have happened because in both cases it would have suited their environment at the time from 23 to 25 million years ago. So it's not just about one is better or one is more risky now. It's also happened in the past because they were developing to suit their environment at the time. The final point we want to cover is evaluating the differences in that genetic diversity and the distribution between those two species. So again, we can talk about that one by one. And with O. smithy, again, it says that they're widely distributed in both coastal and offshore islands, and this shows genetic variation. So we can say that this means that they're able to adapt to a whole variety of different habitats. So this means there must be a good amount of genetic diversity within this O. smithy species because they're able to occupy such a wide range of environments. 
Whereas we can say that the distribution of Osteria is much more limited, like it says in the question here. So this shows remarkably little genetic variation. Because they don't have so much genetic diversity, it's not as easy for them to adapt to all of those different environments. And therefore they only live in a small range of those habitats and their method of reproduction is limited because they don't have so much variation and they can't adapt so easily. So this is how you'd answer a question on speciation.